Greetings, gang. Lunch hour, Thursday. Not happy. I'm not even going to say that because this story just kind of saddens me. You know, over and over and over for the last two and a half years, all we've heard, well, probably longer than that, but all we keep hearing is stories about the plight of the homeless or the plight of blacks or Hispanics or illegals. We also hear the plight of the people who lost their jobs, the plight of businesses that have been ransacked by the unbelievable crime wave that we have going through the United States. There's an unnoticed group nobody talks about in this country that is literally being killed because of Bidenomics. Okay, I'm not talking about killed in the metaphorical state by, oh my God, you know, this is killing me or something like that. I'm talking about literally go see St. Peter at the Pearly Gates killed. Okay. I ran across this this morning and it saddens me. Only way to put it. And I wanted to talk about it. Maybe it's a little therapeutic for me. Uh, for those of you guys that were on the live stream on Tuesday night, you know I was talking about the medical problems that Copper, my Corgi, has. Okay. And what we're doing and how long we've been going through trying to figure this out. I mean, we have literally spent thousands of dollars trying to figure out what the problems are with the dog. Okay. Copper will be 11 in... December. And my fear is by the time we finally figure out what's wrong with him, he'll die of old age. I'll do anything for my dogs. I love my dogs. They're my family. Okay. Just like my daughter's my family, just like Mrs. P is my family, my dogs are my family. I've owned dogs my entire life. This was the story that broke my heart this morning. And the first sentence says, Animal shelters are overrun with stray or owner-surrendered pets this year, leading to spiking post-pandemic euthanasia rates across the country. I want to give you this. 51,000 dogs have been euthanized this year between January and July. That's a 37% increase over last year. That breaks my heart. That food has gotten so expensive, that housing has gotten so expensive, that gasoline has gotten so expensive, that you name it has gotten so expensive. Families have sat down at the kitchen table and decided, we can't afford to keep Fido anymore. We're going to go take him to the animal shelter. Imagine doing that with your kids. Like I said, my dogs are family. I love them as much as I love my daughter, as much as I love my wife. Gee, honey, you know what? We can't afford to feed Junior anymore. Let's surrender him to the foster system. Can you imagine doing that? Now, maybe some people don't have the same love of dogs that I do. I'm betting a lot of you do. But we've got to the point where the people can't afford to feed their animals, can't afford to get a battery of shots once a year that costs 50 bucks if you even pay that because a lot of times you can go to the shelters and get your shots for free and the shelters don't have enough money to feed the animals and so the only solution is to put them down you hear all the conversations about abortion all the time. I'm not ready to be a parent. 
I'm not ready to be a mom. I'm not ready to be a dad. Doesn't matter, you get to write a check anyway. If mom's ready, dad writes a check. Okay, we all know how that one works. It's funny how dads never have a choice in the abortion decision, even though it's a 50-50 deal that got you there. If you can't afford your animal anymore, and I get a lot of people are in a world of hurt financially around this country, totally get it. It's 100% the fault of 537 people in Washington, Congress, both sides, the president and the vice president. They are 100% to blame for this. You can add 50 governors around the country. I don't care if it's a red state or a blue state. They are not doing what needs to be done for the people. And if they're not being done what needs to be done for the people, the ones that suffer are the pets that are there because they're the first disposable thing. We don't need a dog. Now, there's lots of people, farmers, ranchers, people that have working dogs, need dogs. Okay. I'm betting those aren't the ones that are being turned into shelters. I'm betting this is Fido, whose biggest bit of work is chasing a tennis ball or the squirrels out of the yard. Okay. This isn't a blue issue. This isn't a red issue. I mean, I'll give you this. The states that have the highest euthanasia rate this year, New Mexico's number one at 22.6. Solid blue state, okay? Alabama's number two at 18.4%. Solid red state, okay? This isn't red or blue. This is the economics that have been shoved down our throat by an incompetent group of people whose only aspirations are to enrich themselves and to gain more power. The state with the least euthanasia is South Dakota, one of the spart most sparsely populated states in the country. One half of 1% of the animals that are turned in are euthanized. People have gotten to the point where they're starting to get rid of stuff. You know, we all talk about get rid of your expenditures, pay off your bills, cut, you know, get rid of that credit card bill, turn off your TV service, cancel your gym membership, screw Netflix, anything like that. But when it comes to the point that that puppy you gave your daughter for Christmas, I'm sorry, honey, we can't afford the puppy anymore. We're going to have to go give it, give it to the animal shelter. Please find another way. Find somebody that can take the puppy. Go get a part-time job so you can afford the dog food or the shots. Go to the animal shelter and ask them if they've got something. Ask another pet owner if they can help you buy dog food. But please, don't put your animals down. You know, Bob Barker died this week. And... Y'all know how he signed off on the prices right for decades. You know, please help control the pet population. Spay or neuter, neuter your dog. He didn't say, please help control the pet population. Euthanize your dog. Bob loved animals. I love animals. I know a lot of you guys love animals. They're completely innocent in everything that's going on. They didn't cause gas prices to go up. They didn't cause food prices to go up. They just get to live with it. 
or because of Joe Biden and the rest of the cast of crooks in Washington. Lately, they just get to die with it.